Hello, I'm Medina County Auditor Mike Kovac, and it is my pleasure to have with me today Cleveland Browns great Don Cockroft. And Don, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down today to talk a little bit about some history here. Uh, Mike, it's my pleasure uh, to talk about the 1980 Cardiac Kids is is a, is 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 cool. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you've got a book coming out here. Let's see. The 1980 Cardiac Kids are untold stories, a season of destiny, a moment of despair, a lifetime of memories. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but we also want to talk about uh, the season uh, and some of the players that participated there. Leading up to the 1980 season, I guess Sam Ritigliano came in 1978, I believe. Right. It's his mm -hmm. first year at the Browns. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely an offensive-minded guy. I believe it's safe to say. So-so uh, season 78, 79, things were looking up. You guys won a lot of games uh, by close scores at the end. Yeah. And the 1980 season came around and there were a lot of expectations in Cleveland, as I understand it. Uh, <coughs> truly, truly was. Uh, again, as Sam came in, if I can backtrack just a little bit, uh, one of the neat things about Sam Ritigliano was uh, he is a great communicator. And unlike today, uh, he did something I don't know if anyone's ever done, but when they named him head coach in 78, uh, before he was in New Orleans, assistant coach, before he got to Cleveland, he called every one of us players, oh. introduced himself. Right. And I remember, and some other players remembered as I talked to them and interviewed them for the book, said that, uh, you know, he had to prove himself as a head coach for the Cleveland Browns, and we were each one going to have to prove that we still deserve to be a Cleveland Brown. Mm. But everybody was going to get a great you know a fair shot at doing that and just the stories themselves of how he came in and changed the whole complexion mm -hmm. mentally of what we were doing uh, and he didn't get rid of a lot of ball players we had a pretty good basis right and of course uh, 78 79 is when the cardiac kids really started to happen and then of course 1980 is uh, when it when it culminated you know absolutely but that uh, the year didn't start out that well as i recall 1980 a lot of hype uh, the browns coming off a 9-7 season uh, brian sipe coming into his own as quarterback right. You got a couple of future <coughs> Hall of Famers on the team: Ozzie Newsome, uh, Delama Lear, I think. Uh, maybe Clay Matthews too. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe Clay. That's that's correct. Uh, a lot of expectations, and the season didn't open up that well, as I recall. <laughs> no, it didn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, yeah, we opened up in New England, got it really hammered, like 35 to seven or something like that. And then our our second game that year was a Monday night game in Cleveland against the Oilers. Uh, a close ball game, but we lost. And, and again, there's a, you know, I can't already talk, I can't talk about the cardiac kids unless I'm talking about Sam Ritigliano. But one of the things two or three players remembered most was after we lost to the Houston Oilers on that Monday night game. And uh, we are dejected because, uh, Mike, you said it. I mean, everybody's expecting the greatest from the Browns. Absolutely. And we're 0 2. Mm -hmm. And we got Steelers and, and, and the Houston Oilers that are great ball clubs. And the Browns fans don't tend to be, uh, you know, <laughs> they well, let you know. Well, here, <laughs> here's, here's, here's one of the greatest stories, and that is after that Houston Oilers game, you can imagine our, deje our dejection and our down and we're down. And we're <laughs> Sam Ritigliano comes in the locker room, and he looks at us. And, and I remember he pauses and he says, fellas, could you live with 14 and two when the season's over? And we just lost two games. I mean, you're kind of, okay, Sam, but he was serious. Right, right. And, 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 and a lot of guys began to believe because Sam believed. Right. And, and Mike, uh, you don't, probably don't, rec we were so close to being undefeated for the rest of that season. We lost to the Steelers with 11 seconds to go. Right. We lost to Minnesota with no time left. Right. Uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of the game here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we lost to the Denver Broncos basically on a 93-yard fumble, if you will, at <laughs> Randy Gratishar. Right. But we were real close. Uh, so that made that season even more spectacular that we won the division after being 0-2. And uh, again, I think you've referred to it a couple times already, but Sam Ritigliano, you guys are 0-2, and as an athlete, any athlete, professional athlete or not, easy to get down, easy to start looking at the negatives, and Sam lifted up that locker room, and uh, there were bigger things to come there. Yeah, so. he, had a, he had a great way of doing that, absolutely. Yeah. One of my pet peeves is never give up, never quit. Right. And that year, one of the things that made that year so special is somebody stepped to the table every game right every game somebody stepped up and became sort of the the hero that was what made that team so special is nobody cared 
who scored right as long as somebody scored and we won that stuff together that's what made that season and that team that's the mark so of, unique mark of a special team a special yeah. season and that's when that that's happens. what they need today they right. need to understand that and it, it is a team the, the good teams do <laughs> yes they <laughs> the good do teams do yes they do You've got a new book coming out uh, here, hopefully in the spring, and uh, lots of little goodies that go with, with book uh, ordering here. And I oh, believe yeah. that, that song, that, uh, that uh, DVD we were just looking at is part of that that comes along. Right. right? I, uh, when, I, when I interviewed people or talked to people about it, half of the fans remembered that song as much as anything. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I basically, uh, I'm going to show it here. I'm going to, uh, anybody that... Uh, uh, orders the book in advance of its release, which will be early this spring, uh, is going to get this DVD free. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple other things. I kind of put a package together. There's the old kicker. Like, Don that's autographed. Cockroft. That appears to be autographed. It is autographed. <laughs> and this is a special photo because it was the Cincinnati game. Oh, it's the Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, I've so seen that's that kind of cool. A lot. Yes, now I want to know. And then why. Uh, we have the team photo of the 1980 Cardiac Kids that people get. And since the book is going to be a little bit later, again, people can advance order if they go to thecardiackids.com. Uh, in the meantime, I give them a certificate of ownership, let them know the book's on their way. So uh, I'm excited about it, Mike. Uh, I don't think there's ever a book that has ever covered a team or a season as we have done. It's going to 500 pages. It's a mm -hmm. coffee table book. It started out 300 pages. Right. Going to be over 500 with about 450 photos, um, and I know you got some things about it. And some great, uh, great stories in there. I've looked at some of the the previews, and again, some of the players that we talked about don't even touch on. Maybe some of the you know you got Jerry Shirk in there, yeah. Dick Ambrose, uh, Ozzie Newsom, Joe yeah. Delamalur, a couple of, uh, of uh, Hall of Famers on there, Brian Seip, uh, all the women out there. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure well, there's yeah, some. Mike. I've done one of the things that. Uh, that I've done, as I said, I interviewed every player and coach uh, that's alive, about 140 hours worth of interviews. But we've done a then and now story on every player, coach, right. uh, basically how they got to uh, professional football, their younger years in life, right. uh, their careers in the NFL, and what people are really going to enjoy is where they're at today, what they're doing today. That's one of the highlights of the book. Right, absolutely. Um, uh, again, that's uh, the website you can go to. Some of the pictures are up there. Some of the, the some of the stories are there. Right, uh, we have a summary a of the quotes. Uh, yes. Summary of the book, uh, kind of an overview of the book, and of course, uh, I'm I'm selling three different editions of the book: the standard edition, uh, the deluxe edition, and the premiere. And I, I want to encourage any real avid Browns fan that has a few bucks because it's not cheap. But right. the premiere book is going to have. 32 autographs from official autographs of the players are starting, including Sipe and Matthews and Newsom and right. the Matthews. Uh, and again, the print that goes with that. I want to encourage people to look at that because it is a collector's item. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, the website pretty much gives you an overview of the book and what we're offering. And as I said before, we're going to give away some bonus gifts to people who order the book prior to its release. And this has been a, a real labor of love for you. Uh, put a lot of time being put into this book, right? To make sure it comes out the way you'd like it. Uh, uh, a lot of research. Uh, oh yeah, a lot of research. Yeah. Uh, my co-writer Bob Moon has uh, written, a, well he's written a book and he's put together about five or six books. He's a great Browns historian. So between him and uh, the football knowledge that he has, we're covering about uh, a very comprehensive look at that team and that season. But it's been, yeah, three years. Uh, for those fans that may say, yeah, Don, I ordered the book a year ago, uh, they all understand that I, I didn't know I was going to be 500 pages. I thought it was going to be 300. Right. And so hopefully, bear with me, it is coming out, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, Don Cockroft, uh, Cleveland Browns great. On a rare occasion, there emerges a group of players and coaches who put self-serving interest aside and buries selfish pride enabling a team to perform feats which otherwise it would not be able to accomplish. That summarizes the 1980 Cardiac Kids, their untold stories, the book coming out by Don Cockcroft here this spring. Uh, you can look that up at www. 
thecardiackids.com with a K, of course. Uh, Don, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come out and chat with us today, and I appreciate all of you who've tuned in uh, for watching us. I'm Medina County Auditor Mike Kovac. Thank you very much.